Hello, this is ANN News Correspondent Maxine Shear at Orbis International at Air Venture 2012. And I am talking with Jack McHale, who is the project director of this project. He has a long history with uh, aircraft manufacturing, airline operations, and Orbis. And so, Jack, why don't you tell us about yourself and your history with Orbis International? Well, I started my career in Long Beach in 1965, where this airplane was being built. Uh, I spent 22 years at McDonnell Douglas, marketing and sales. I had a customer in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, that I was successful. My team was successful at placing some airplanes. And in 1987, I went from uh, McDonnell Douglas to Federal Express. And that was my first introduction to Orbis because Federal Express is the predominant aviation supporter of this airplane. So I was fortunate enough, because of my McDonnell Douglas history, to be the umbilical cord between FedEx and Orbis. And then I retired from uh, FedEx after 22 years and was so uh, enamored and blessed to be able to help this organization that for the last three years I've filled various roles here at Orbis. Tell us about why you are here at Air Venture. This is a phenomenal event for us for several reasons. Number one, we're very proud of this airplane. It's very unique and it, and it really fits the parameters for Air Venture. It's a one of a kind. Uh, it's the melding of two phenomenal disciplines, aviation and medicine. Uh, we've had several thousand people go through the airplane just in the last couple of days and everyone's just amazed at uh, what goes on. The airplane's beautiful to watch flying. Uh, we did a uh, flyby at the opening of the show and everyone was impressed. But the real beauty of the airplane's on the inside. So it's great for us to spend a week here. We expect around 35,000 people to go through the airplane. You were here in 2003. Yes. What has changed at Orbis since that time? Uh, since 2003, we have decided that this this is the second DC-10 built. It went into flight test in 1970 for two years and then went into commercial service uh, for 20. And we bought, bought the airplane in 1989. It replaced the DC-8 that was donated by United Airlines that flew from 90, 82 to 92. Uh, and then this airplane is 20 years old. So uh, DC-10 pilots and DC-10 parts and DC-10 tech te technical support is shrinking. So it was clear to us in around 2008 that we need a new platform. And Federal Express donated a new MD-10 Series 30 freighter for the new Flying Eye Hospital. So this airplane is going to retire to a museum. Uh, we've had several offers to showcase the airplane in situ at various museums. And next spring, we'll take off with our new MB-10 Flying Eye Hospital, hopefully for another 20 years. Tell us about what the aviation community, uh, both professional aviators and private uh, aviators, could help you with your goals. One of the key aspects of this airplane is an uh, advocacy tool. So the, the, the real message is that there's 39 million blind people and 32 million don't have to be blind. And if they had access to or could afford care, they could see almost instantly. And this isn't like a, a search for a cure for AIDS or cancer or HIV. This, this is a proven technology. Uh, the business model that we use is such that everyone can help. Uh, the aviation communities embraced us, especially the, the major carriers who give us seats and, and engines and spare parts and technical support. Uh, but we've had a tremendous outpouring at this show saying, gee, this is great. I feel an affinity, an aviation affinity with this medical, philanthropic, unique airplane and I'd like to give. So we have all kinds of ways to give. Uh, no donations too small. Uh, we do a lot of uh, pharmaceutical antibiotic distribution. 
So a $5 donation has a little child in Ethiopia avoid trachoma, which is a disease that makes your eyelid grow inside, but it can be avoided by taking this Zitromax that Pfizer donates. Uh, we can do cataract surgery that's uh, less than $10. So you can you can transfer you can transform a life very inexpensively. So everyone can help. So it sounds like there are lots of opportunities to make financial donations that are meaningful and large to uh, to, to small. Um, what other types of things could the aviation community do to help you? I think it's advocacy. It's getting the word out. We don't know how lucky we are to be born in this country to have access to all this medical care, to be able to afford it. It's very rare that you see a blind person in the United States. And quite frankly, if you're born in, in some of these developing countries like India or Bangladesh, you really don't have a very easy life to begin with. And if you're blind, you don't have a life at all. So everyone can help. Uh, you go on the website, we have a text for sight. <clears throat> if you have a really great day, or if you're taking off into this beautiful sunset and you want to help somebody who can't see sunsets, you can text for sight the word sight to 27722 and we get ten dollars and some little boy in Ethiopia gets to see the same sunset. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for your time and your work. No, thank you.